Hi, and welcome to this little quickie that's all about testing materials. Because we've heard a lot of numbers. We're always hearing about hardness and tensile strength and things like that. But where do those numbers come from? Well, those numbers come from standardized tests. And there are many, many, many different types of tests. So, let's take a look at some basic techniques for testing uh, the properties that are most often cited in projects. Let's start with hardness. Now, there are two basic ways of measuring hardness. The first is with a scleroscope, and it's based on height of rebound of a very hard uh, ball on the surface of the part that we're trying to uh, measure. Now, obviously, a harder part is going to rebound higher, and that's the basis for that one. The second one is penetration. And where I hail from, there's two main types or two main ways of measuring a penetration. One is measuring the distance of penetration, and the other is measuring the width of the footprint created by that penetration. So when we're measuring the width or the surface, I should say, of a footprint, well, that is the Brunel method. And when we're measuring the depth of penetration, well, that's Rockwell. They both give good results. It often depends on what the type of equipment you have at hand. Let's start by looking at Brunel. Now, the Brunel test uses the standard one, a 10 millimeter steel ball. It's going to be placed on the surface of the part to be measured as far as hardness goes. And then we're going to apply to the ball a 3,000 kilogram force. Now, obviously that ball is going to penetrate the surface of the piece of aluminum and it's going to create a footprint. Well, if I calculate the surface of that footprint in square millimeters and divide it by the load applied, in this case 3,000 kilograms, I will obtain the Brunel hardness number. The Brunel number obtained, the HB number, is proportional to the hardness of the material. So a very hard tool steel is somewhere around 800 HB. A medium carbon steel that has been hardened is somewhere around 400 HB. And a mild steel comes in around 200 HB. The standard for Brunel is 10 millimeter steel ball and 3,000 kilograms of uh, force. But obviously, if we're checking tool steel, well, a hardened steel ball isn't going to work that well. So a carbide ball can be used in those circumstances. And there are scales, Brunel scales, for very soft materials. And in that case, we're still going to be using the 10 millimeter ball, but we can reduce the force applied to 500 kilograms. The Rockwell test also measures penetration, but it doesn't measure it as a footprint. It measures it as real depth of penetration. And we've heard about Rockwell C and Rockwell B. Well, Rockwell C is a scale used for hardened steels, medium or high levels of carbon. And the Rockwell B is generally used for very mild steels, or non-ferrous metals. The Rockwell C scale uses a 120 degree diamond tip penetrator and a 150 kilogram load. The B scale, the Rockwell B, uses a 1 16th of an inch hardened steel ball as a penetrator and a 100 kilogram load. So let's perform a Rockwell C hardness test on a V-block that was made with 4140 steel. It has been hardened, so I would fully expect it to be somewhere around 45 Rockwell C. Here we have a Rockwell hardness tester. This machine measures Rockwell C and Rockwell B scales. Now basically, the Rockwell hardness test consists of measuring the depth of penetration of a penetrator and deducing from the depth of penetration how hard the material is. 
if we go over the machine quickly, we can see that we have an anvil. Uh, the anvil supports the part that we're going to verify. The anvil can be moved up and down using this hand wheel. We also have the dial, or if you prefer, what we're going to read to determine the hardness of the part. Here we have the load adjustment knob, and towards the bottom here we have the load application lever and the return to preload lever. The dial on this particular machine has three scales. In red we have the Rockwell B scale. In black the outer ring scale we have the Rockwell C scale. And towards the center of the dial we have the 10 kilogram preload scale. We can see here that our load adjustment knob is set to 150 kilograms, and that's the load that's required for a Rockwell C test. And since this is a Rockwell C test, we're going to be using the 120 degree uh, diamond point penetrator. If you're going to test a part on this machine, the part needs to be very well finished. It has to be nice and flat and not crusty. Now, this test will leave a small mark on the part, but very small, and the part has to be very stable on the anvil. Now, we're going to bring the part in contact with the diamond by using the hand wheel. The 10 kilogram preload is very important because it levels the playing field and makes sure that all tests are performed with the same starting point. Once the small dial indicates that we have the proper preload, we can set the main scale, in this case the C scale, to zero. We're now ready to activate the machine, and to do that we're going to use the load engagement lever. We can see here that the dial is still moving, and that means that we're still penetrating the part. Once it stops, there we go. That's not the proper reading. We have to return to our preload. So let's go back to our preload and now we can read the scale and we see that we have about 48 Rockwell. Pretty well what I expected. Tensile strength, elasticity, plasticity are three very important properties and we can measure all three with a tensile strength test. So let's go see what a tensile strength test looks like. This tensile strength test will indicate to us such properties as limit of elasticity, the plasticity of this material, as well as its rupture point. To do so, we're going to use a hydraulic ram and we're going to apply progressively more and more force on a test part. Our equipment includes a console that incorporates all the hydraulics. Now this console will apply uh, progressively more and more uh, tension to the test part. And while doing so, it will record the pertinent data. The hydraulic ram is made to hold tightly and pull on the star of the show. And in this case, the star of the show is our test part. Our test part here is a necked and accurately turned piece of mild steel. It's necked or reduced in diameter so that we can predict where the rupture will occur. And its diameter is accurate to help us with our final calculation. In this case, our test piece measures 399 thousandths of an inch in diameter. That means that it is one-eighth of a square inch in surface. Since the final results will need to be in a square inches, well, we'll multiply the results of this test by eight. So let's take a look at the test itself.
and we can see that the maximum force required to break the test part was 13,049 pounds. Multiplied by 8, since my test part was 1 eighth of a square inch, that gives me roughly 104,000 pounds per square inch. And that tells me that this isn't, as I mentioned earlier, a piece of mild steel, but it is actually a piece of unhardened 4140 medium carbon alloy steel. So, breaking the part, well, that gave us the overall strength in tension. But there's other things we can find out. We can discover with that test how elastic this material is by cycling it. In other words, pulling and letting go, pulling, letting go, pulling, letting go, uh, progressively more and more as far as weight goes and discovering the point at which the part will no longer return to its original length. And I will have found the limit of elasticity. Now also, since the part uh, stretches before it breaks, and we have in the center a striction where it gets smaller just before it breaks, well, I can measure the diameter of the original part and the diameter of the smallest striction and I can calculate the percentage of deformation. And that gives me a very good indication of the plasticity of the material. And finally, let's take a look at shock resistant testing. Now, the mock-up or the little desktop apparatus that we're going to see in the example is not a functional apparatus. It's just a mock-up that I had made some years ago for classroom demonstration purposes only because obviously a real shock tester well has to have a hammer that delivers 300 joules of energy to the part that's going to be broken and that requires something that's about six times the size of what you're going to see so it's really just for demonstration purposes but we will still get the basic principle for a shock resistance test, we're going to want to break a test piece that's going to be rigidly held in an apparatus that is going to hit it with a hammer that's going to be dropped from a known height. Now, that hammer has a sliding scale on it, so as the hammer comes down, it'll hit the part. Now, normally the part would break. I'm not going to run the test here today. I'm having a little hard, okay, there. And once it's broken, well, the hammer will carry on its progression and it will position the scale to its furthest progression. So let's see. There we see that it grabs and pulls that scale indicator, and in this case, right to the end. But if we'd hit a part, that part would have absorbed a lot of energy and the dial wouldn't have made it that far. The difference between the test being run as I'm doing here without any test piece and then after breaking the test piece, well that'll tell me the difference uh, between the two uh, strikes and that will give me the possibility to calculate its shock resistance. So there you go, the basics of shock resistance. Now, shock resistance is a little different from the others because it's there to help us understand how a material reacts at different speed because it is a, a violent blow that's delivered. And materials react differently to forces applied at different speeds. So it's a good indication. Now, the equipment used uh, in those demos well, is out of reach for most people, and like I said, there's really no reason to want to do them. But that doesn't mean that at home there are times where we, you would like to know how hard a part is, or what its properties are. Well, there are ways of testing such things at home, cheaply or basically at no cost. So here's a link to a short tips and tricks for home uh, testing. That I, a little video that I produced a couple of years ago. You might find it interesting. And on a parallel note, I've uh, received some emails concerning my website. Now, many people these days, I guess, 
uh, go on the websites with mobile devices. Uh, the problem is that my website really isn't set up for mobile devices and it's pretty hard to, to navigate through on a smartphone. That's principally because the only mobile devices that I own will have wheels on them. Uh, so if you want to see the website and access all my videos, it's all free. There's no signing up or anything like that in both French and in English. Well, maybe find an old computer and uh, take a look on a normal screen and you'll be able to navigate the website uh, with a lot more ease. So, happy viewing, have fun, be safe, and as always, happy machining. I need you.